thing here. And there we are. Good morning, everybody. Um, I hope you guys um, did well on the assignments that we talked about on Monday. And we're going to start with questions on those assignments, 2.1 and 2.2. Today, the only section we're going to do is 2.3. And I'm going to get my list out here. So um, let's first go over questions you have on 2.1 and 2.2, if you have any. And then we're also going to talk about the learning catalytics quiz that you were supposed to have done for today. That was due at 10 o'clock this morning. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that. So first, did anybody have any issues or questions from those first two sections of Chapter 2? You can type it in the chat or turn on your microphone. Okay, I'm going to assume no questions. Um, so it'd be this is where it's difficult being online instead of seeing you face to face because sometimes I can look at your face and tell that you really have a question. But um, that's okay. Uh, keep in mind that when I answer questions, I answer questions on what I taught in the previous class, and then I don't ask for questions on that again. So while you get a week to do the homework before it's actually due, um, to ask questions, you need to try to look at the assignment, even if you can't complete it, you need to at least look at it so you'll know if you have any questions before the next class time. The next time I will take questions on 2-1 and 2-2 would be either during my office hours or um, during on the review day. So remember, if you haven't printed out the um, the checklist planner yet, Please do that. That, of course, I've written on it because I write stuff on there for me. But please print out that checklist planner that's in the Unit One folder under Lessons, because that'll let you know what you've got to do to keep up with the class. All right, then let's talk about the Learning Catalytics quiz. So the learn, I sent an email out to you to remind you. I sent that out last night to remind you to take the Learning Catalytics quiz before 10 o'clock this morning. I had a lot of people take it. 17 people took it, so that was good. Um, I have a few people who did not take it, and so I'm gonna. We're gonna talk about this just a little bit before we go on to section 2.3. So I call them LC quizzes because um, learning catalytics is a lot of a lot of a lot of writing. So. You're going to see these periodically. I don't have a bunch of them that I assign. I think over the semester, I usually assign about five or six, less than 10 for sure. And they will show up in your assignments. And for since we're online, normally I would do them in class and we would do the quiz together in class. But since I can't do that, I'm making it available for a certain amount of time and you just go in and take it whenever you can. There are no real rules on the learning catalytics quiz as far as what you can use. You, I expect you to use any notes that you have, um, and that's fine. It's in order to get as good a grade as possible, these do count towards your quiz average. So and remember, your, so it does. The learning catalytics quizzes will count towards your quiz grade. Now, uh, on this one, the very first learning catalytics quiz we take, I consider sort of practice. You notice I asked you some uh, questions at the end, and I'm going to show you what the results look like to those questions in just a minute. At least I'm going to try. And um, so for this first one, though, it's sort of a practice, learning how to take the learning catalytics quiz. And so everybody who took it and completed it this first time will get 100. So I will go back when, and I can't change the grade in my math lab, in my stat lab, but when I download that assignment to my spreadsheet, my personal spreadsheet, 
then everybody will get um, that took it will get a hundred. I won't be able to change it in my stat lab. We repeat that. I can't change the grades on a learning catalytics quiz in my stat lab. It's so it will stay whatever it is on your grades in, in my stat lab. So I want to point out too that the average they show you in my stat lab, you should just ignore. The overall average, it's not accurate. The only accurate average will be the one that you see in Blackboard under my grades. That will be your accurate average. And I won't put grades in there until uh, test one or right before test one. I, I may, since our test one isn't until September 21st, I may go ahead and put a, a current quiz and homework average in there just to give you an idea of where you're at. But um, I will, and, I, and then I'll update that after you take the first test. So everyone will get, everyone who took it this time, I will give a grade of 100 when I do my grades. If you made 100 the first time, if you already have 100, I'm going to give you five extra points and your grade in my records will be 105. Now, there are a few of you who didn't take the learning catalytics quiz at all. Okay, so right now what you have for that is a zero that's going to be averaged in. I'm going to make the learning catalytics quiz available again. Those of you who haven't taken it yet, you will have a chance to take it again then that and that will be it and whatever grade you get is what you get so you won't have the automatic 100 because you didn't take it by the due date um, and if you make 100 I'm not changing that to 105 so um, I'm going to give like I'll, I'll probably give until I don't know Sunday just in case some people need the um, weekend I'll probably give until Sunday to take it, but from this point on, when there's a learning catalytics quiz there, you need to pay attention to the due date and make sure you complete it by then or you'll have a zero on a quiz. Okay, any questions about that? And then on Monday, everybody who's going to take it will have taken it and we'll look at the results together. All right, and we'll use that as part of our review, not Monday, I'm sorry, Monday is Labor Day. We don't have class on Monday. Let's write that down. No class Monday. Is it Monday Labor Day, guys? Um, that's September, what, 7th? Isn't Monday Labor Day? Yes? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we won't have class on Monday. So I will see you on Wednesday. So on Wednesday, which will be like the 9th, I guess, on Wednesday the 9th, I, I'm pretty sure I left Monday off. Yeah, if you notice on the uh, checklist planner, I go from Wednesday, September 2nd, that's today, to Wednesday, September 9th. So I realized we wouldn't have class on Monday. And so on next Wednesday, part of what we'll do is look at that learning catalytics quiz, the results of that. Any questions about the learning catalytics quiz? So, if any of you did not do it by 10 a.m. this morning, then basically I'm going to give you, since we don't have class until next Wednesday, I'll probably give, open it up until Tuesday night. Those of you who have already taken it, you could take it again, but it's not going to change your grade. But if you just want to take it again just to see it again and see if you can do it without looking at your notes or something, you know, sort of practice for the test, that's fine. Um, you already took it once, so you know what the questions are. And if you want to try again and see if you can remember what the correct answers are, that's great. All right. So uh, for that, chapter one, learning catalytics quiz, I'm going to basically put it on there again. I may give it a different name, like I may call it chapter one B or something like that. Okay. So I'll adjust the title a little bit and then I will make it available. Available. I'm sorry, I got lost in my syllables. Available until Tuesday night. 
But if you don't do it by Tuesday night, that's it, okay? That'll be a zero on that quiz, and that is going to count towards your quiz average for your course grade. All right, so let's move on. And those of you who did it the first time, uh, great job um, in, in keeping up and doing the things you're supposed to do. That's terrific. Uh, for those of you who weren't able to do it when you were supposed to, then uh, just try to, I, I try to tell you in advance, and you can see usually on the checklist planner when I'm going to give a learning catalytics quiz. So I believe the next one, I'm looking at our checklist planner. The next learning catalytics quiz is on Wednesday, September 16th. And I may make it due that day. In fact, I probably will because I want to go over it as part of our review. So think of that one as I don't, I may, I'll probably put it, I'll put it on before Wednesday, September 6th, 16th. If you have your checklist planner out, then on Wednesday, September 16th, where it says uh, Chapter 2 Learning Catalytics Quiz, uh, put there that it's going to be due that day, like before class. And I will send an email out about that as well. All right, let's go on to... Uh, section 2.3, and I think I'm going to erase this other stuff here, except I'll leave that up there. And 2.3 is measures of central tendency. So we're going to talk about what these things are um, first. And then in the second part of the session today, we'll look at some of the homework problems. And we'll also look at, some of you may have seen the thing that's available in the little help hamburger called open and called Stack Crunch. And so uh, if any of you are interested in learning how to use Stack Crunch for some of the problems, then um, that I'll go over that, the instructions for that, in the second session today. All right, so there are three measures of central tendency, and they are mean, the other two start with an M also. Has anybody looked ahead? I know some of you are going this already. What are the other two measures of central tendency, that means these are numbers that kind of describe the middleness of a data set, like the center, it descri kind of describes the center of the data set. Median. Median. Mm -hmm. And what's the third one? Mode. Very good. Those are the three measures of central tendency. I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not real sure why the mode is considered a measure of central tendency, but it is, so we're going to leave it there. Definitely median, we understand, because median is the middle. Just like the median of the road is in the middle of the road, the median of a data set is the middle number. We're going to talk about how to do that. And I'm going to take some actual data. I thought I would take um, some test grades on test one from my spring class. And we'll do these measures on it. And that, of course, will be a sample. And we will talk about the difference between sample mean and population mean. Don't forget to look over and study your symbols for the different, uh, that, that, that I gave you, the symbols list. So these are things I really need you to print out. Um, if you only can only go to, if you don't have a printer and you need to, like, put it on a flash drive or something or and take it up to Office Depot or something to get them to print it out for you. Go ahead and figure out all the things. Go ahead and find all the things that need to be printed out in every unit folder that I have in there so far. And maybe that will reduce the number of times that you have to do that, hopefully. I don't really like the idea of you having to go repeatedly. So try to look for those handouts 
in the different unit folders. I don't have all the checklist planners up yet. Um, so that's that's going to be difficult, but um, I can try to get some of them up at least only have to go once per unit. So maybe go and have everything printed off for unit one and then go have and then when we get to unit two, do that one. All right. So let's first talk about mean. Mean is another word for something. We don't usually call it the mean. When we find the mean of a set of numbers, and we find the mean of our grades all the time. Mean is just another word for what? Does anybody know? We usually call average. it something else. It's average. the same thing as average, right. And we've all done averages. You've all averaged your grades at one point or another. So the mean of a data set is just the average of the numbers. The median, let's talk about that a little bit. I already told you it will be the number in the middle, but it's the number in the middle when you put them in order. Otherwise, you could scatter them and a different number would be the median. So this is the middle number or the average of the two middle numbers. Sometimes there's two in the middle. And then mode. Does anybody know what the mode is? Kind of sounds like what it is. Most. Most, right, Christina. So the mode of a data set is the data value that occurs most frequently. So the data value that occurs most. See how the word most kind of sounds like mode. Median is middle because that's where the median and the road is, is in the middle. And then mean is average. All right. So you need to know these definitions and what they are. And these are di these different things are uh, meaningful at different times. Um, so let me give you an example. If you were talking about um, teacher salaries in a particular school district or employee salaries. Let's think about that. Say you were talking about all the employee salaries in a school district, say a public school district, maybe Fort Worth ISD. And you were talking about all the employee salaries and you were including administrators, teachers, staff, bus drivers, um, the cleaning service, everybody, all employees. You could average those, but the average might not tell you much unless you narrowed it down to a particular thing. So the average would give you information, but it might be skewed because you might have some really high numbers and, you know, really far apart. And those really high numbers might skew it, not really give you an idea of what you get paid to teach or to work for Fort Worth ISD. The median might be a better measure, might tell you more, because the median would tell you, okay, half the people who work for the district make more than this and half the people make less than this. That might give you a better idea of what happens, what the pay is like. The mode might give you an idea also, although you'd probably say you were going to join as a member of the staff, like a teacher's aide or something like that. If you're going, then you might look at that particular thing and you say, okay, what's the most common pay for the employee? So you can see how these different measures might give you um, more or less meaningful information. Sometimes the average is meaningful though. For example, it test grades. We often look at the average. So I'm going to look up on my computer. I'm going to get us some data, and we're going to do the mean, median, and mode. Now, this will be sample data. And I'm going to kind of do it, just pick some grades randomly from my spring class. So give me a second here. Real data is a little bit more fun to deal with than made up stuff.
so I'm looking at my spring 2020 class, you know, the one that got interrupted in the middle. And I'm going to look at the grades on test one. Now, I think what I'll do is I will start with the first non-zero grade and then take every other non-zero grade after that. So it's sort of a type of systematic random sampling. Okay, so here are my, gonna be my test one grades. So I'm picking the first non-zero grade. A zero grade would just mean they didn't take it. I don't have anybody take the test and make a zero. I don't think that's ever happened. So the first non-zero grade on test one, this was in the spring. I'm just going to list them. And I'm going to do every other non-zero grade. And the, if, I don't, if I don't get enough values, I'll come back and get some more. So I'm skipping over the zero grades altogether as if they aren't there. Oops, the last one I put up 60, 98. And I'm being honest here. Now, there were, uh, coincidentally, I skipped over a lot of the better grades. So this, this looks worse than it was. Um, so I will, I could have looked at all the grades, but I didn't want to do that many numbers. It actually was better than this, but this was, this is every other, I started with the first non-zero grade, and then I took every other non-zero grade after that, just to be random. And so um, what I would want to do with these, if I wanted to find the mean, median, and mode, is I, I, li I like to start with going ahead and putting them in order, from smallest to biggest. So if I put them in order from smallest to biggest, it would be, Uh, so I did that one. I'm going to mark them off as I put them in order. I did actually have several A's, but just coincidentally, um, as I was doing every other one, I was skipping over a lot of the A's. I just don't want you guys to panic. Okay, so plus it's, uh, you guys, I have to say this. When I was looking at and I was doing attendance, I noticed I had perfect attendance. Everybody either came or they watched the session or they did the homework. So you guys are doing great. Now, I put these numbers in order first. That was to make the median easier to do. Now, for this one, let's figure out the sample size. The sample size is going to be how many grades I took. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I have n equals eight. So the first thing I need to do, if I want to find the mean, so we're going to start with the sample mean. because this is a sample. But I'm going to go ahead and talk about the formula for population mean. If I was doing, and the whole population would be like the entire class. We could consider the whole class as a population. If I had done the entire class, I decided to do all statistics students on test one, or all of my statistics students over the last, I don't know, five years or something like that then that, I might consider that a population mean. And just to remind you, for population mean, the symbol is mu. For sample mean, the symbol is x bar. So 
So we're going to find X bar because we're finding the sample mean. If we were finding the population mean, we would call it mu. Remember, that's a Greek letter mu. Now, the way we find that is we first, you guys know how to find an average, right? What, what should I do with these numbers first in order to find the average? How do you average your grades? What do you do first? Add them up, divide by eight. Add them up and divide by eight. That's right. Now, we have a symbol that means to add them up. So we're going to use that in our formula. So I could say the sum, hopefully you guys can see this down here. Sig, capital sigma, that's a capital sigma, means to sum up. And I'm going to say the sum of the x's. So we're going to call our data values our x's. Okay, so the sum of the x's. And I'm going to get that. So we start with the sum of the x. And sometimes you'll see an i there. And that little i, it just means, that's just a counter. That means I'm going to sum up x1, x2, x3, x4. And in this case, i, like this first one, that would, that would be x sub 1. This would be x sub 2. And so all together, I'd be summing them up from I going from 1 to 8 because I have 8 data values. And then I'm going to divide by how many. If it's a sample mean, I'm dividing by little n. And if it's a population mean, I'm dividing by capital N. But it's the same formula. So when you're finding the mean, whether it's population or it's sample mean, you're just adding up all the data values and then dividing by the number. We're going to find the sample mean. So I'm going to add all of these up. I don't have high hopes for this mean, by the way, because when I skipped every other one, I didn't grab a whole bunch of terrific grades. But notice I don't have any grades below other than the zeros. I didn't have any grades below 51. You could see that as a a positive. I didn't have any really uh, super low grades. They were all close to at least passing with a, a, a D would be 60. So the sum of my data values is 544. And I would divide that by the sample size, the number of values, which was 8. And if you were showing work, and on one of the uh, problems on the, I'm going to give you a practice quiz to do with Proctorio, with the proctor, with the proctoring service, so you can practice with it. And on that one, there's going to be one question where I want you to show your work. And I want you to show your work on, it's the one that's going to ask you for the mean, median, and mode. And so what I'm showing you now, this is the kind of work I would expect to see for the mean. So I would like to see that your sum, this right here, that work. And then I'm going to divide that by 8. And that divided out evenly to an average of 68. If it had not divided out evenly, then I would be told to round to a certain place. When you're doing the mean, if you're not told what to round to, there is a rounding rule. So I'm going to write the rounding rule for the mean. It's sort of a default rounding rule. So if they don't tell you what to round to, well, in fact, let's call it that. Let's call it a default rounding rule. And this is for finding the mean only. The default rounding rule is to round one decimal place past or further than the data for the mean. And this is a very common rounding rule for a lot of things we're going to do for a lot of measures is to round your final answer one place past the data. Here, let me explain what I mean by that. So if you look at our data, there are no decimal numbers after the decimal point. They're all whole numbers. 
So to go one decimal place past the data means if I if this had had a point stuff here, I would have rounded to that first number after the decimal point. So these are whole numbers. So if I need to round, I would round to the nearest tenth, which is that first place after the decimal point. If these numbers had been to the tenths place, like if this had been 51.5, if any of these had been to the then I would round my mean to the hundredths. Right, the second place. And if they had been hundredths, if there had been hundredths, I would round to the thousandths place, three decimal places. However, you're, when you round to a, to a whole number, you never round more than to the ones place, the whole number. So even if none of these had any numbers in the ones place here, say it had been 50, 50, 50, 50, 60, 70, I would not round to the tens. So the, the most you're ever going to round is to the nearest whole number, which is what we ended up with for our final answer here. So our mean ended up being 68. And that's going to be X bar. And try to get used to when you're doing your writing your work on paper, Get used to using the different, the correct symbols for everything so that when you take a test and you see a formula, you'll know what the symbols mean. One of the things I want you to print off is the formula sheet for test one, which we'll take a look at later. But if any of you have already printed it off, that is a, that formula sheet you're allowed to use on test one. And you'll, if you look at it, you'll see a formula for population mean and sample mean, I believe. I think I'll pull it up and we'll look at it together in, in a minute. But um, you'll see this kind of formula for sample mean, this formula for population mean. So you need to know what the symbols mean. Get used to using them in your work so that you can become familiar with them and remember them. Any question on finding the mean? You've done averages before, I'm sure. So this probably doesn't seem unusual to you. Okay, so let's go to the next measure of central tendency. I'm gonna leave my data values up here. And I'm gonna erase this. And I'm erasing sample and population because for median and mode, they aren't different. We don't have, uh, there is just a median and there is a mode or sometimes there's no mode sometimes there's more than one mode so um, let's go to median first though and we don't have a sample and a population median we just have a median and on this one remember we had an even number of numbers what that means is there's not going to be a number right in the middle Notice if I count, so I'm going to move my fingers in, and I land on two in the middle. If you have an odd number of numbers, so if you could picture, say I had um, suppose I only looked at the first five of those, notice there would be one number in the middle, and that would be median. The median of that list would be 56. But the median, to get the median for this list, because there are two in the middle, I'm going to find the median by averaging them. In other words, I'm going to find what the halfway point would be right there. That's really what we're looking for. So we're going to take those two numbers, 59 plus 64, and divide that by two. We're going to find what number is exactly halfway between. And we're never going to round this. So in my calculator, I'm going to do 59 plus 64 and divide that sum by two. And I get 61.5. And that is going to be our median. Notice in this case, the median is not a number in the list. It's halfway between the two middle numbers. When there's an odd number of numbers, the median is actually a number that's in the list because it's the number, the data value that's in the middle. Any question about median? Okay, great. All right, 
we're doing pretty good on time. Let's talk about the mode now. In order for there to be a mode, you have to have a number that occurs more than once. And if you look at this, I didn't have a number that occurs more than once. So this set of data has no mode. However, I'm going to look back at the grades and see if any of the grades were for test one. Um, so I did actually have uh, I had a couple of the same when I look at the grades for test one. Um, let's see. Some of the grades that aren't on there. Uh, I see an 77. I'm sorry. An 85, a 90, a 95. There are a couple. There was another 59. So let's look at how that would change things if I added that other, if I added another 59 in here. First of all, that would change the sum. What did I just erase? I don't remember, 64, that's what it was. Okay. So I added another 59 in here. Notice I still, I write it down twice. Now it has a mode because there's a grade that occurred twice, but I did have another grade that occurred twice on the actual list. Um, I had a couple of people that made a 90, either 90 or 95. 90, 95. Yeah, I had a couple of people that made 90. So you can have more than one mode. On this one, the way I have this written, the mode would be 59 because that's the number that occurs most. Um, if I added another 90 in here, because I had two 90s on the test, now I have two modes. Those were the most common. Let's suppose, okay, so I'm just playing with the numbers to show you what to do with mode. Let's suppose I had a third 90 on here and two 59s. Then 90 would be the only mode because it occurs most. So you can have more than one mode. You can have no mode. You can have, um, so you ju you're just looking for the one that occurs most and it has to occur at least twice. So now if every single number occurred twice, they wouldn't all be modes because you have to have, in order to be a mode, it has to occur more than at least one other data value. So really mode is the easiest thing to do. And especially when you put them in order, you can find them really easily. Okay, so I see here two the same. Here I see, oh, there's three the same. So that's my mode. Any questions about mode? Okay, what I'd like to do with you guys now is look at the symbols sheet. Uh, I mean the formula sheet. Well, you should print off the symbols sheet too, but look at the formula sheet for test one. So I'm going to do that with you. And then I think we'll go to um, my math lab, my stat lab. And look at a question or two from this 2.3 assignment. Then after the break, we'll talk about some of those questions again and how to use Stack Crunch. So hold on just a second. I'm going to um, go to I'm, what I'm doing is actually 
I think I'll go ahead and share my screen with you so you can see what I'm doing. Can, uh, can one of you turn on your microphone and tell me, can you see the Blackboard page at this point? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. So this is the home page, of course. And I'm going to go to Lessons. And Unit 1. Did that show up? Can you all see what I'm doing? And see all the documents I have in Unit 1? Yes. Terrific. You see the checklist planner there? That's the thing I want you to print off. Then the list of common symbols. That's another thing I want you to print off. These PowerPoints, I wouldn't print off PowerPoints, but if you want to look over them, if you had trouble with any of those sections. Then you see here the test one formula sheet. Now I'm actually going to click on that on the link. And sometimes when you open a link, you have to go down to the bottom and tell it to open it up. But this is the test one formula sheet. I want you to print this off because I'm going to, you're allowed to use this on the test. So you see here I have the, the first, um, actually I forgot, population mean and sample mean. I don't put on this. I expect you to know those. I expect you to know how to find the mean, median, and mode. So this very first formula you see here is actually from section 2.4. I forgot that. Yeah, you, I expect you to know the formulas for mean. When we, next time, though, we'll be talking about variance next Wednesday. And that's the first formula that I give you uh, to use on the test. I'd forgotten about that. So that means that um, you do need to memorize, know how to find the average, the mean, median, and mode on your own without using your notes because only the formula sheet will be allowed on test one. All right. Um, let's see. It's not quite time for the break. Let me see how long we have. I have about 15 minutes. So let's go to my math lab. And if you can, I'd like for you to go to my math lab as well so that we can do a problem or two together. So I'm going to try to go to this, and I'm going to need you guys to give me feedback if you're not seeing the whole thing. Hold on a second. I'm going to, yeah. So You know what? I'm going to do, I'm going to do, no, I, I want you to see this. Sorry, I'm kind of changing my mind as I go. I need to share my screen with you so you can see what I'm doing. Let's see if this works. I'm going to stop sharing that. Okay. So can you guys see my screen from my math lab? Yeah, I can see it. Okay. Yeah, thank you. So I'm going to be clicking on things. And so, Natalie, since you answered that, if you will tell me, you know, if you can't see what I'm doing, then, then I'm not going to waste your time if you can't see it. So on this, notice for 2-1 uh, two, one and 2-2, two, two, you can't start that one until you have done the um, Chapter 2 Skills Review. But I'm going to go to this assignment, 2.3, Question 1. So Natalie, is that showing up, Question 1? 
Um, I can see where it says question one, but it didn't open up all the way. I can't see the question. You can't see the question? I just see Let question me. one, question two. Okay. Let me try again, okay? Does anybody see question one? No. No? Okay. Then that's going to be a waste of our time if you can't see that. Um, I will have to do screenshots. If you're looking at your own question one, um, I'm going to read this. I'm going to read it to you, just this one question, so you'll get an idea of the first question. I'm sorry that you can't see it. Um, the first question says, Determine whether the statement is true or false, and if it is false, rewrite it as a true statement. And it says, a data set can have the same mean, median, and mode. So let's discuss that a little bit. And then during the break, you can work on some of 2.3 and see what questions you have. So this very first question here, I'm going to go back to this. If you're on my stat lab, then open up question one. And I think yours will be the same as mine, that mine was. And it said, true or false, a data set can have the same mean, median, and mode. Do you suppose that the average, the middle, and the most, is it possible for them all to be the same number. I'm not saying does it always happen. Obviously, it doesn't always happen. It didn't happen on our example. The question is, can it happen? Can they all be the same number? What do you think? No, I don't think so. OK, let's see if we can make up a data set. So, um, These are my numbers. Find the mean, median, and mode. These are the numbers. So to find the mean, what I would add them, right? So, and I believe these add up to three, five, seven, nine. These add up to 10. So the mean, let's say this is a sample mean, so we'll call it X bar. So we would take 10, divide by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the mean would be 2. I put these in order. What's the median of this list? There's five data values, so there should be one in the middle. Do you see the one in the middle? And now looking at those, what is the mode? Is it two the most frequent number? Now, it's unusual, kind of, for the mean, median, and mode to be the same number. But we're going to find out later is that in things in real life, like um, people's heights and weights and things like that, there are a lot of things in real life where the mean, median, and mode are the same number. We're going to find that out. So it is possible for the mean, median, and mode to be the same number. It's kind of hard. I mean, I made this one up, and I was trying purposely to make it come out. But the, the fact is that if, if it can happen, then it is true that the mean, median, and mode can be the same number. Now, before you go, I need to check roll real quick. And then before you go for the break, when we get back, 
I will cover more questions. I'd like for you to work on 2.3, and I'll also talk about stat crunch when we return from the break. So let me call your name, raise your hand, and leave it up until I'm done. Um, Cecil? Cecil, are you there? Raise your hand if you're there. Thank you. Diamond, raise your hand. Leave them up until I'm done, please. Jacob Lee. This is our exercise. Christina. Layla. Mia. Natalie. Samira. Stephanie Garza and Temperance. Did everybody hear? Hopefully, everybody heard your name. If you didn't hear your name called, let me know. And everybody can put their hand down. And we'll just take the break early. So, we're going to have a little bit longer break today, uh, about 35 minutes or so instead of 30 minutes. And we will get back together at noon. And at that time, we can go over, hold on a second.